It's hard to imagine a conversation about the legends of the game where Pele's name does not come up. The three times World Cup champion is one of the most popular names in the game and one of the greatest footballers of all time. Born Edson Arantes do Nascimento on October the 23rd, 1940, Pele is a retired Brazilian footballer that garnered a reputation as a very technical forward, absolutely devastating in front of goal. Pele had an extremely unique skill set that went far beyond just being a prolific goal scorer. He had impeccable off the ball movement and combined with his stellar work rate, it made him a nightmare for defenders to mark. He also had the vision and technique to create chances for teammates and would often take on a playmaking role as a second striker or an attacking midfielder when the team needed him to be. Although he was only 1.73 meters tall, Pele scored many headed goals because he had a good leap in him and his heading accuracy was exceptional. He was a good set piece taker too, scoring a handful of seriously impressive free kicks in his time. Most of the early years of Pele's development involved learning from his father. He came from a humble background, so he could not even afford a proper football and played with socks instead. Eventually, Pele got the opportunity to play for a few amateur youth teams. It was during this time that he led Barra Athletic Club Juniors to two Sao Paulo State Youth Championships. He was also involved in futsal competitions, and he credits his development during that time to the way futsal was played. The quick thinking, working with tight spaces and quick movements of the ball undoubtedly had an important impact on his technique. This continued until 1956, when Pele was 15. He was taken by his first professional club, Santos, to try out for the team, and he impressed the coach well enough to earn a contract with the club. Three months after signing his contract, Pele made his senior debut for Santos in a 7-1 victory over Corinthians, and he scored the first of many career goals in that match. Soon enough, the Brazilian media started to pay attention, hailing the teenager as a future superstar. His development was incredibly quick too. Within a year of playing in the first team, he'd become the league's top scorer and earned a call-up for the famous Brazilian national team. The hype only blew up further when he made his first international appearance in a 2-1 defeat against Argentina. He scored Brazil's only goal in that match, the first of many international goals too. Considering the blistering start that Pelé had to his international career, there would have been very little surprise at the fact that he was part of the squad called up to represent Brazil at the 1958 World Cup. It might not have been surprising, but it was still impressive nonetheless. He was still a teenager at the time, 17 in fact, and he was representing one of the greatest footballing nations in the world on the biggest stage. Pele was sidelined with an injury at the beginning of the competition, so his first involvement came in the third match against the USSR. There he got an assist and Brazil won the game. He went on to score six goals in four matches in that World Cup, coming up to second place in the goal scoring rankings alongside France's Jus Fontaine. Five of those six goals came in the semi-final and the final against France and Sweden respectively. In the game against France, Brazil was already 2-1 up at half-time before Pelé scored a hat-trick to put the game beyond the reach of the French. He became the youngest player in the history of the World Cup to score a hat-trick. He could not have chosen a better game to do it. Pelé made more history in the final against Sweden. After striking the post with an effort, two goals from Vava gave Brazil the lead. One of Pelé's two goals, the first one to be exact, has since been nominated as one of the greatest goals in the history of the World Cup. He flicked the ball over a defender and volleyed it into the corner of the net. You've probably seen that one before. It was in the 1958 World Cup where Pelé played in and won his first international trophy that he announced himself to the world. He was the greatest revelation of the competition, and fittingly, Brazil's new number 10. Four years later, in the next World Cup, Brazil successfully defended its title. By this time, Pelé was 21 and had come on as one of the best players in the world. However, he did not have as much of an impact here as he did first time round. After starting off with a goal and an assist in the opening game against Mexico, Pelé injured himself in the next game against Czechoslovakia. The injury kept him out of the rest of the competition, 
and Brazil had to turn to Garincha to be the talisman as they raced to their second consecutive World Cup title. In 1970, Pelé won his third World Cup title in four attempts at the age of 29. It was an opportunity grabbed because he had initially refused to play in the World Cup anymore because of the aggressive, physical treatment he got from opposition defenders. The Brazilian national team of 1970 was substantially different from the team of 1966. Some players had retired, including Garincha, and they'd been replaced by a new set. That new set of players formed one of the best national teams in history. In the opening match, Pelé scored a goal as Brazil beat Czechoslovakia 4-1. He got the assist in a 1-0 win against England and scored a brace in the final group match against Romania. Brazil won that game 3-2. A reputation for turning up in big games was only made stronger with Pelé's performances in the knockout stages of the competition. He got an assist in the 4-2 quarter-final win against Peru and another in the 3-1 semi-final win against Uruguay. The final against Italy was played at the Azteca Stadium in Mexico City. Pelé saved his best performance of the knockout stages for that game. He scored the opening goal with a header into the back of the net. It was a sign of things to come as Brazil scored three more goals, two of them assisted by Pelé. They won the game 4-1, and Pelé won the golden ball for the best player in the tournament. Less than a year after that, he played his final match for Brazil against Yugoslavia. His international career was extremely successful, and it's almost impossible to beat three World Cup wins with any club achievements, but Pelé made his presence felt in club football too. After his performances at the 1958 World Cup, some of the biggest European clubs tried to sign Pelé. Inter was almost successful and even managed to put a contract in front of him. It didn't end well as Santos's fans revolted and the contract had to be torn up. To prevent further attempts from European teams trying to take their prized asset, the government of Brazil declared Pelé an official national treasure. It practically sealed the fact that he would spend the bulk of his career playing in Brazil. In the time he spent playing for Santos, Pelé scored 643 competitive goals for the club. If you ask the man himself, he'll tell you he scored over a thousand goals in his club career, including non-competitive fixtures. In 1974, Pelé retired from Brazilian club football. A year later, he came out of retirement to join the North American club, New York Cosmos. Over the next few years, other big-ticket players such as Johan Cruyff, Eusebio, George Best and Gordon Banks joined the league. In fact, one could say Pelé paved the way for the transfer pattern of signing big-name players in the twilight of their careers that the MLS is known for today. On the 1st of October 1977, Pelé closed out his career in an exhibition match between the Cosmos and Santos in front of a sold-out crowd at Giant Stadium. There he scored the final goal of his career, a 30-yard free kick, as the Cosmos won the game 2-1. Throughout his career, Pelé picked up quite a few trophies. He was six times Campeonato Brasileiro Serie A champion, twice Copa Libertadores champion, twice Intercontinental Cup champion, he was once Intercontinental Super Cup champion, 10 times Campeonato Paulista champion, and 4 times Torneo Rio Sao Paulo champion. On an individual level, Pele won a lot of awards. He was the most famous player of his time, so it's no surprise really. Some of the biggest individual achievements include FIFA World Cup Best Young Player in 1958, FIFA World Cup Golden Ball in 1970, World Player of the Century by the IFFHS in 2000. South American Player of the Century by the IFFHS in 2000. Best Brazilian Player of the Century by the IFFHS in 2006. FIFA Player of the Century in 2000. FIFA 100 Greatest Living Footballers in 2004. South American Footballer of the Year in 1973. Football Player of the Century, elected by France Football's Ballon d'Or winners in 1999. World Team of the 20th Century in 1998. World Soccer Greatest Eleven of All Time in 2013. Ballon d'Or Dream Team of 2020. IFFHS All-Time Men's Dream Team in 2021. IFFHS South American Men's Dream Team of All Time in 2021. Again, these are only a handful. 
he won a lot more. There's only so much that a short video like this can cover, but the legacy that this man has created will continue to be discussed for years, even decades to come. Take a bow, Pele. You absolute legend.